And guys, did you have any questions about Tibet that you now have the answers to? I think the first question that I really wanted to know was how well preserved was the Tibetan language. And I think it was very clear that the government is doing a pretty good job at protecting Tibetan culture and Tibetan language. So, you know, when we went into a hospital, all of the signs were in Tibetan first and then Chinese, and some of the signs were in English. And when I actually asked the head of the hospital, who is actually a Tibetan woman, she said to me, well, many of the doctors here actually don't even speak Mandarin because they never learned it. And a lot of the patients don't speak any Mandarin. So obviously we have to see our patients and speak to them in Tibetan. And they actually even showed me the um, software that they use to write sort of the diagnoses, and that also was in Tibetan. So that part was important to me. Also, when I'm going out into little villages, all of the street signs are still in Tibetan. So it's quite clear that there isn't a policy that's stopping Tibetans from knowing their own language. Now, teaching Mandarin is also very important because that gives more job opportunities for Tibetans to be able to go to other provinces or do business with other people from other provinces. It's important to have a unified common language that everybody in one country, whether it's the United States or whether it's China, where they can all communicate. I saw that happening in Tibet. That's my question that was answered. That same sort of transition happened in European countries 100 years ago. If, if you go back 100, at least 150 years ago, people in northern France and southern France could not talk to each other. But it became worthwhile for people to get the opportunities from knowing standard French. So it's natural for people to want to learn a language that creates economic opportunities from, for them. In China, I think every school in the country teaches English, which, which creates opportunities for people around the world. Students want to learn English. It's not being forced on them because it creates business opportunities for them and lifestyle opportunities. One thing that bothers me is the use of the term genocide. It's a very serious term and it should not be minimized. It should not be used in a minimal way. It's really not killing a culture and it's really not killing a people. I don't think there's anything like that going on. So I think we should take that term off the table. Yeah, I'm an American and I love the United States, but I'm very upset with how former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said there was genocide taking place in China and how Tony Blinken, the current Secretary of State, has said the same thing without showing any evidence. I've been here most of the last 23, 24 years and I don't like the false narrative that Blinken is perpetuating after Pompeo and which a lot of U U.S. media are talking about simply because China wants to create a unified patriotic country. It's the exact same thing in the United States. When I was a school child in New Hampshire, I had to recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag every single morning. Everybody in the United States, if they want to go to college, has to take the SAT in English. You know, it's just normal to have a lingua franca for people within a country.